Hello learners, I am Yashaka. Uh, in the last lecture, we discussed the various concepts of language learning and language acquisition. Today, we are going to deal with uh, methods of language learning. We already know that language learning requires a particular environment that is classroom and there are various methods that we can use for teaching of a targeted language or teaching of English. Here we are focusing on teaching of English. So, what are the various methods of pedagogy and how these pedagogy or methods evolve? Over the period of time, methods keep on changing as per the need of the society and, and the knowledge of how learners learn and how it should be taught. So, uh, if you look at it like previous years, it was always considered that one language interferes in learning of other language. But over the period of time, due to researches in neurology, we got to know that multilinguality actually uh, enhances brain function or cognitive learning. So, now we uh, use multilinguality as a classroom resource for language teaching. Right now, when we are dealing with methods of language learning, there are basically three approaches that we follow. One is grammar translation method. Other is communicative approach. And third is structural approach. So, as we move forward, we'll, uh, we'll be focusing more on communicative approach today and we'll later on deal with structural and grammar translation methods. When we look at communicative approach, the name of the approach itself says that it has something to deal with communication or the way we interact with each other. When we talk about communication, there are at least two people involved in the process. One would be the listener and other would be the message sender or the person who is speaking. So, otherwise the communicative loop would never be fulfilled. One would be a sender, somebody who sends the message or says it out and the other would be the receiver. So, the sender sends the message to the receiver, receiver comprehends it and then response. So, this is the whole cycle of communication. So, we need at least two person for communication. When we are talking about communicative approach, so we need to understand why uh, we actually came up with this approach of communication. So, it was majorly the educationist and linguist felt that the grammar tra uh, traditional method or grammar translation method was not equipping students for real life communications. They were not able to actually interact in real situations, for example, in job interviews or while they have to do a survey. They were not, uh, they were not able to gather or assert themselves in a proper manner. That's why they came up with an approach called communicative approach. So, uh, if you look at like each one of us has been given a uh, faculty to produce language, but we still produce various kinds of languages or we speak different languages. There are people who speak Chinese, there are people who speak Latino, there are people who speak Swedish, Sinhalese, uh, Saura or Punjabi, Haryanvi, Bhojpuri, Maithili. These are different languages, but the faculty that we are using for producing these sounds or these languages is the same. That's basically we are using our 
uh, mouth, we are using our vocal tract, we are using our lips and at times our nose. So, the biologically all our features are the same, but if you look at it social linguistically, the language we speak differs. So, now we need to understand why there is a difference between the language we speak. As we have already know that we learn the language from our environment. So, the language we speak is determined by our environment. People who, what the kind of language that people around us are talking, the exposure to the language that we get or even in the classroom situation, what are the languages that we are exposed to determine the social linguistic repertoire of ourselves or our language box. Then, uh, after that we need to learn about uh, how can we use this communicative approach in classrooms. If we talk about the classroom, we have multiple number of students. So, for communication, the first thing that comes to our mind is that we need at least two students in one group or to work in pairs. Here, like the onus of learning is transferred from teacher to the student. So, the first and major portion of communicative approach is that it is a child centered approach. Now, we need to understand what is a child centered approach. Child centered approach is an approach where the onus of learning depends on the child. Here, the child is an active participant in the classroom. He is not just a passive or she is not just a passive recipient. Here, like it is the child who is interacting. So, the major interaction or the major talking time is taken by the student and not the teacher. So, that is why we call communicative approach as child centered approach. If you look at other, uh, other ways or other methods, for example, using of audiolingual or oral oral method, somewhere there is a lot of repetition or a drill. So, in that case, students are repeating what has been told to them. It is not something that is coming from them. So, they are not using their natural faculty for language. So, they are not coming up with their own uh, language, so to say. So, if you look at the basic principles of communicative approach. So, the first principle is the role of what is the role of teacher? The role of teacher is reduced to a facilitator, a mere facilitator who gives the real life situation to the students and let them assert, let them communicate. What would happen with this? Here, the children will learn on their own, they will understand the process of communication, they will understand the communication loop, they will be more, uh, they will uh, they'll enhance the perspective taking ability. Because in these situations, you actually need to know what other person is trying to say and then you respond. So, you have to be a listener first. Second thing is, lessons are usually theme based. What do you understand by the word theme based? So, when we talk about theme based lessons, the first thing that we need to understand what is a theme. For example, we take theme as water. So, what would be the various concepts which would relate to water? We will start from composition, properties of water. Then, uh, from what are states of water? Then, might be water pollution. Sources of water. One basic thing, uses of water,
then we can deal with politics of water. Then we can deal with dams and hydroelectricity. Then we can deal with religious sentiments related to water. So, so on and so forth, we can actually deal with various concepts that can come under one theme. Here we have taken the theme as water and then we have seen that what are the various things that we can cover under one single theme that can be water. Now, all these topics are needn't be covered in a single class, but it can be taken across classrooms. So, when we talk about communicative approach, the lessons are more theme based. So, teacher can actually look at the various concepts that she wants to deal with it in a particular stage or age. See, for example, now we can, if you want to use communicative approach, so if you have to deal with concept of maybe politics of water. So, what is politics of water? Politics of water basically deal with like what are the various sources of water, how uh, in our country water is being used uh, it's a natural resource, but how it is being used by political parties or a community to overpower. The use of water itself uh, somewhere determines that how, uh, how a particular uh, state or a particular community gains that strength. Like for example, politics of water in also includes like making of dams how it actually disturbs the life of the people who are living by that source, whether whose source is it, what are the benefits of making a dam in a particular region, what do we mean by why do we start with Narmacha Batao, uh, Narmada Bachao Andolan. So these concepts can be dealt if a uh, teacher creates a situation that one, uh, there is a group of students who are actually supporter of dams and they consider, as, uh, consider it as a pillar of development. There could be other, other group of students who are activists and sub, uh, do not support dams because somewhere they see that how it actually spoils the life of people who are living by water. Then there could be a group of students who are tribal, who have been affected by making of dams. So the teacher can create an authentic situation for learning where there could be an interaction between all three groups and they can understand the nuances of this process of politics of water. Third thing when we talk about it. Lessons are built around real life situation. So when we talk about real life situations, for example, uh, my, uh, you have been overbilled. So your mobile bills or some electricity bill, you think that you have been overbilled. So you call the customer care and talk, talk about being overbilled, have an interaction, or probably it could be uh, you have to write in or you have to apologize to somebody for a mistake that you have done. So these are more real life situations that we are dealing with. That is where communicative approach comes into picture. Fourth is basically using a lot of games, songs, material which is more authentic. What is an authentic material? Something that we get in real life. For example, newspapers, magazine, bulletins, notices. These are the kind of material that we need to bring in the classroom as these are the materials that we encounter in our real life. Then. Uh, the, one of the major thing about a communicative approach is when to give the feedback. So teacher actually doesn't give a feedback when, uh, when students are in the process of learning or in the process of communicating. So the feedback is given post the class. So it's not on the spot query because otherwise the flow of communication would be broken. Other is, uh, if you look at the various factors that we have discussed till now, that is like teacher, uh, the role of the teacher is of that of a facilitator. Second, the lessons are more theme based. Uh, students tend to use more, the teacher, uh, teacher and student tend to use more real life situations. Authentic material is being used in classrooms. Feedback is given post the communicative exercise. So we can see that the whole premise of this approach is based on trial and error. 
you learn as you go and if we want to bring this approach in classroom how can we do that first is through role play so what is a role play role play is like when uh, you have been given a certain situation and there are certain characters that are interacting and there is a particular theme that we are talking about or a particular situation we are talking about so then the students adopt to these roles and then interact so first and the foremost way of dealing with communicative approach or a practice that can be done in classroom is role play then we can create mock interviews So while we are having this activity of mock interviews, what is it that we are learning? Students are actually learning how to formulate a question, how to coherently respond to a question, what is the right time to respond, how to put your thoughts in a comprehensible manner. So these are the skills that they are learning while they are uh, role playing or doing a mock interview. Then we can do a lot of learning by teaching. What is learning by teaching? It's just that the here we are trying to actually topple down the hierarchy in the classroom where the students takes the place of the teacher, comes to the board and deal with a particular concept. So what the child is doing is presenting his or, uh, his or her ideas about a particular concept in a coherent whole and interacting with the whole class. So basically the child is learning to interact uh, with a group of people. It's a more of a medium of mass communication where you're not just you are going to a bigger loop Not just one uh, there are like there's one sender and there are multiple receivers Then when to give attention to whom how to respond to uh, multiple questions when to uh, how to give a uh, How to give an answer which can satisfy multiple people and if not then how to deal with a particular situation then other thing that we can do is to have surveys where the children will go out of the classroom situation interact with people uh, interact with people for a particular question for example if there's a situation that i want to open a restaurant but i don't know what kind of a restaurant i should open just so that it's profitable so i'll uh, i can actually do a survey within the uh, within the school and go to different people of different age group, different, uh, different gender or you can say uh, people belonging to different class also and uh, get to know about what is it that they like, what is the kind of cuisine that they prefer, what is the cost that they are ready to pay for an evening or for dinner or for lunch. So that is a kind of a survey that I can run and then come up with the solution that what is the kind of a restaurant that I want to open. So here another that what we are doing is interacting in real life situation in a real life example and dealing with real people. So it's not some it's not like we can do with simulated situations also. But here the situation is real life. Another thing about the communicative in, uh, approaches that we can fill in the information gaps. For example, that we have read something and we are uh, we are unable to. Uh, it's a disjointed whole of information. So there are certain gaps. So we can actually go ask other people about it, read through a certain newspaper articles, then ask about it, hold a discussion in a public forum. So all these methods are uh, part of communicative approach. So what we are doing with communicative approach, we are giving them real life situations to deal with. Now, one thing that is majorly a demerit of communicative approach is that we focus more on fluency. So it's not about being accurate or correct. So somewhere correctness of the assertion is being compromised. But the, uh, and other thing is sometimes what we are saying, it might not be coherent. So we are not actually focusing on coherency. It can come on a later stage when we are comfortable with the language. But somewhere in using communicative approach, we have to 
kind of uh, bring in another approach to look at the correctness of the assertions also. So students, today we have actually dealt with communicative approach. What are the various features of communicative approach, role of teacher, role of text, the kind of text that should be used while we are doing, uh, while we are uh, dealing with language teaching through communicative approach and its team edits. Thank you.